Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com, and thanks for watching another weekly video. This week we're going to be talking about stick welding a little bit. And the reason why is because the Boy Scouts have a new merit badge for welding. came out February 2012, and what I hope to do here is provide a little, a little aid for the counselors so that they can show several scouts at one time, or scouts can watch it on a smartphone or computer screen before they tackle this thing and it'll give them a little heads up a little edge a little head start and uh, so that's what I'm about today but I also found out this is a really good guide for anyone wanting to get started stick welding this little handbook so I want to do a real quick overview here what's involved the very, very first thing uh, the step is to do your initials on a piece of plate like this with a piece of soapstone or a scribe and then tracing it with weld the next thing is pad a bead like this, cover a three by three by quarter inch plate with weld beads. This is this is basic stuff that you, anybody's going to do to learn welding. It's it's a really good exercise, most bang for the buck in welding. And then a square groove weld, welded both sides. I'm using only eighth inch thick here. That's about as thin as you'd want to go using stick welding here and welding it from both sides. But it's it works out about right that thickness as long as you don't set the machine too hot. Then T-joint welded from both sides and then after the T-joint is a lap joint tacked up and welded both sides again and that about wraps it up so these are all basic joints that you would do uh, progressing along in any welding school obviously you won't obtain proficiency in the, with the merit badge program but it gets a really good a really good start to welding for a scout so I'm going to be using this Lincoln Tombstone Buzzbox welder uh, set at about 150 amps for the 1 8 6013 rod. The reason I chose this machine, number one, is because it's probably more of these machines out there than, than any other machine. And I want to start off with stick welding, something really basic, and something that a machine that uh, someone is most likely to have. I will be covering MIG and, and uh, both bare wire and flux core for this uh, Boy Scout series also. Same joints and everything. But for right now, I thought we'd kick it off with stick. Now, the first uh, pad of bead thing is a quarter inch piece, supposed to be approximately a quarter inch thick by three inches by three inches. I think it's going to be a stretch to have the exact dimensions, so that's going to be up to the counselors of what they allow. But I would say even a piece of square tubing or a piece of angle iron would suffice as long as it's thick enough for running beads on. So you got to get all your safety equipment, chip and hammer, wire brushes, uh, gloves, jacket, welding helmet, safety glasses, etc. You want these guys to be safe. You don't want anybody getting a bad experience and getting flash burns and all that kind of stuff. So you know, I'm all geared up here with my jacket on. I'm trying to be a good example. <laughs> Auto darkening welding helmet is a big plus for anybody learning uh, stick welding. It lets you see where you're striking. It's not a must. It's just a very big plus and it's also a big safety plus to keep somebody from getting flash burns. All right, again, I'm skipping over the initials thing because I'm, I'm going to advise people to wait uh, till till later on to do the initials because uh, you'll be a lot better at running beads after you do the uh, pad of bead and some of the other joints. So we're going to do the, the pad of bead here. Now what I've got is about a piece of half inch thick metal, more like about uh, two by four, but the guide said approximately, so I think I'm close enough here. Actually, in my opinion, the thicker the better for scouts, a half inch would be a lot better for learning on. Now I've sped this up to about 400 percent so you can see my uh, electrode feeding in rapidly here and that is the big issue with stick welding. That's going to be the big issue for a scout is uh, compensating for that stick burning off and keeping a close enough arc and I'll show some of that uh, how not to do it here in just a minute. So we're going to stack beads on top of beads about halfway over until we get the whole plate covered now let's talk a little bit about how not to weld before we go any further. The first thing, this is the main problem, long arcing, because that rod is continually burning off and getting shorter, and because somebody new to welding is not accustomed to that, it's just going to be long arcing all the time. So see when I tighten it up there how much better things get? And the next problem would probably be not hot enough, not enough current to even keep it lit, because that will force you to kind of long arc just to keep it lit. And it's just a bad situation. You've got to have enough heat. But this is a little too much heat. See, it's just, just wandering off the corner and sagging off and everything. So those are three things not to do. Let's get back to padding the beads the right way now. Again, I'm set at about 150 amps. 
Um, I'm not really sure how accurate this machine is. It's been through a flood, a couple of floods actually, never taken apart and cleaned. So it seems like it should be uh, only need a little bit, you know, maybe 135 or maybe even 105 amps. But 150 here is working pretty good, so I'm just using what works. Each machine is going to be a little bit different. AC is going to be a little bit different than DC. And, uh, but you, the main thing is you get that bead going good and, and uh, flowing good and not too hot, not too cold. And the counselor will take care of that, advising the scout on uh, what's a good setting on the machine. You can make small little oscillations with this with this 6013 rod. It's not necessary. It can be drugged just steady and, and straight. But I find making tiny little circles helps a, a newbie uh, with the speed of travel a little bit better than trying to trying to adjust and just gradually move on in, in a straight line and keep things the same. I'm swapping directions here. That's not necessary. I think it's a good idea at some point in learning to weld to weld left to right and right to left. But I'm swapping directions here in case we got some lefties out there. One way will uh, make more sense to them than the other. And I'm about to put the last bead on there. And I'm going a little bit wider than I normally would go just to tie in that edge. So see, this is nice slow tra travel speed, but that's because I'm having to do a little bit of oscillation just to tie it over to the edge. Now that's filled up one side with beads. This is this is probably the best bang for buck. It doesn't matter if you're MIG, TIG, stick, flux core welding. If, if you don't get this down, you're, you're wasting money going on to, to, to other metal. All right, now let's do the initial. Using a piece of soapstone here, I, I marked my initials, JC. And I found uh, after doing one practice one, it was a little tough to follow, so I would advise maybe uh, not just making a one single mark, but making a nice heavy mark. You can even use a center punch every eighth of an inch, or if you have a metal scribe, it would help it see better. But uh, this this helped me having a little bit wider soapstone mark there to see where I was going. And again, I've sped it up tremendously here, just to kind of give a little bit of more of a visual aid on how quickly that rod feeds in and my hand positioning and all that stuff. Of course, it's feeding in a lot more quickly here than than it would. I think it's, like I said, about 400%, possibly even more. But for the sake of uh, not boring anybody, I just sped it up. Now, I noticed here on, on mine, after I got finished, that my C looks a little bit more like a G than I would like for it to. And that is one thing that I really enjoy about welding is there's not much you can do that you can't fix. So I just added a little bit more bead, more weld to that, and I'm off to the races. All right, next is we're going to tack two plates together to form a square groove butt weld. I use a little 1 16th spacer rod here. That turned out to be, in some cases, a little bit too much with the amperage that I was using, so I had to turn it down to 135 amps, but um, it worked okay then with a little bit tighter gap in 135 amps. Again, the amperage is going to be a little bit different with each machine. But I welded one side of that up and then cleaned it up a little bit and turned it over and welded the other side. I am using again a little a little slight oscillation. There's also this technique that works and might help the scouts out as far as uh, tying both sides in just a little zigzag motion to uh, help see the the seam, plays the light a little bit, help you see the seam. It works. When the crack completely, when the gap, that is, completely closes up, sometimes it's more difficult to see than if there's a slight gap. So that's where that little zigzag works, playing the light or some type of little oscillation. You notice the bow in the plate. The counselor can talk to the scout also about how heat warps metal and how the contractile stresses of the, uh, or the shrinkage stresses of the puddle and all that affect all that. It'd be a good, a good thing to, uh, to mention. And of course, you got to be careful handling this hot metal. Next is tack two plates together in a T-joint and have the counselor inspect it and then weld both sides. Tack on each end and it's ready to weld. Again, this is 11 gauge or 1 8 inch thick metal. 
you can see with a close-up like this that it's got quite a lot of arc force but it doesn't look like it's penetrating very deeply and it's not a 6013 is not a deep penetrating rod now I would advise also on these T joints to go ahead and, and stack beads on there and get a little bit more practice. So I'm I'm going to put two more beads on this T joint. There's one on the bottom half of the first one I put in, and then I will lay another one in the top. Might as well get more practice with the uh, with the metal. It'll only serve to make you better. And there's a three bead T joint. Next is tack two plates together in a lap joint and have the counselor inspect it and then weld both sides of that. So a lap joint is a pretty common joint used for patches and whatnot. But you got to keep that arc tight because if you don't, you'll just chew off that top member. And you got to have enough amperage to where it's pushing that slag back to the back of the puddle, especially with a 6013 rod. Well, that's it for today. I hope this video winds up being useful, helps counselors and scouts alike. Thanks for watching very much. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.